In this session, we're going to look at the Civil 3D 2017 improvements associated with corridor solid extraction. On my screen, I've got a drawing open. This is called 06 Solids Extraction. This drawing represents a corridor model that is being used for a road reconstruction project. Let's say I'd like to leverage this model in my construction software. To do that, I'm going to extract solids from the corridor. Solids represent a universal component that can be accepted by most design applications. Now, historically, if you extract solids from a corridor model, those solids didn't retain much information. In Civil 3D 2017, we have much more control over the output. Let's take a look. To extract solids from this corridor, I'm going to select it, and then from the contextual ribbon, I'll choose Extract Corridor Solids. I can then tell Civil 3D the area I'd like to extract solids from. I can do that from Station Range, All Regions, or I can extract solids within a predefined polygon. I'm going to use that option. Let's zoom in, and we'll extract the solids that fall within this red polyline. I'll press Enter. This brings up the Extract Corridor Solids dialog box. As I drag the slider up, it looks like there's a lot of stuff in here, and there is. It's not bad though. Fortunately, it's all organized very well. Let me click this button to collapse the tree. Here we can see all the baselines that make up this corridor. Let's open up the baseline associated with 89th Street. Here we can see the regions in that baseline. Let's expand a region. Here we can see the assembly that was used. If I expand that, I can see the subassembly parts that make up the assembly. If I expand one of these, I can see the shapes that make up the subassembly. Each of the shapes that fell within that square are going to be extracted as a solid. If we look at the color column, this is where we control the color of the extracted solid. The colors that we see here are being dictated by the code set style assigned to the corridor. I can change these if I want. Let me click this color selector. I'm going to choose red for my base solids, and I'll click OK. Let me expand the tree. After making that change, you may think, well, man, if I got to go through and do that for all of these, that's going to be time consuming. Actually, it's very easy. In Civil 3D 2017, we can right click on a shape and we can apply its settings to all shapes with the same code. If I drag this down now, we can see that all of the base shapes are red. Let's drag this back up. We're going to make one more change. I'm going to change the Pave 1 codes. Let me click the color selector. We'll make these green, and I'll click OK. Let's right click on the shape. I'll go to Apply Settings 2. Note there's another option here called Siblings in this node that would change all of the shapes within this subassembly. In this case, I'm going to choose all with the same code. If I wanted, I could then use this column to the right to define a naming template for the extracted solids. The default's fine for right now. Let me choose Next. In Civil 3D 2017, our extracted solids are now able to carry attribution. It can do this through the use of a property set definition. Property sets are a lot like object data tables, if you're familiar with Map 3D. You can see there's three tables in this drawing. Corridor model information contains these attributes. All of them will be exported with the solids. If I wanted to remove an attribute, I could do that by toggling the visible setting. If we look at the corridor shape information table, we can see this attribution will be exported as well. If we want, we could create our own user defined attribution. I'm going to create a couple. I'll right click in the name column and I'll choose add. I will then click on the user property and I'm going to call this owner. And I'll press enter. I could give this an optional description. I can also give it a default value. I'm going to make myself the default owner and I'll press enter. Let's create another property. I'll right click and choose add. I'll click on the attribute and I'll call this one condition. For the default value, we'll make this fair and I'll press enter. Now that I've defined the appearance of my extracted solids and their attribution, I'll come down and click next. This is where we can control the output. By default, these will be extracted as 3D solids based on corridor sampling. This is the most popular option. That being said, if your output needs require it, I can open this menu and we could export these as 3D bodies or 3D swept solids. I'm going to stick with the default. Now, where do I want to put these solids? If I extract them into the current drawing in Civil 3D 2017, I can also have them be dynamic to the corridor. That means if my corridor model changes, these extracted solids will update as well. I could also add them to an existing drawing, or I could put them in a new drawing. I'm going to do that. I'll come over and click the ellipsis button, and I'm going to save these in a sample folder on my hard drive. I'm going to call this drawing Solids, and I'll click Save. Now that I'm finished, I'll come down and click Extract Solids. Let's press Escape to deselect the corridor, and then we'll open that drawing that we just created. I'll choose Open. I'll select the Solids drawing. I'm going to change the visual style. I'll do that by opening the In Canvas menu and I'll choose Conceptual. I will then hold down the Shift key and the mouse wheel. We'll orbit this up and I'll zoom in on the end. 
Let's select the Pave 1 solid. If I come over to the Properties palette, I can see right here it was assigned the color green. Next we'll go to the Extended Data tab. Here's where I can see that extended attribution. If I drag this down, I can see the various property sets. Let's go down a little bit further. Here we can see the user-defined information that I added. We mentioned that these are editable features. In this case, I'm going to change the owner to Bob, and I'll press Enter. I will then move my cursor out, and I'll press Escape to deselect. Let's choose the base solid. I'll go to the Properties palette, and we can drag this down and see its information. For this one, we'll change the condition to New. So using Civil 3D 2017, our extracted solids have the ability to carry data. If you'll indulge me, I'd like to show you something else. I'm going to close this solids drawing. We won't save changes. Back in our original file, if I hover over this corridor, I can see it's using the All Codes code set style. Just for a second, we'll take a look at that style. I'm going to go to the Settings tab. We'll expand the General category. I'll open up Multi-Purpose Styles, Code Set Styles. I'll right-click on All Codes, and I'll choose Edit. Here on the Codes tab, I'll expand the Shape category. Here we can see a listing of the shapes that are used to create the solids. If I drag over to the right, in Civil 3D 2017, there's a new Classification Code column. We can use this to add custom attribution within the Code Set style. You can use this for anything you like. Material, Manufacturer Name, Pay Item. As an example, I'm going to change the Classification Code for the Pave 1 shape. Let me click in here, and I'll type Super Pave Concrete and I'll press Enter. I will then click Apply and OK. If I select this corridor now, go to Corridor Properties. Here on the Codes tab, if I expand the Shape category, we can see how that attribution is being carried by the corridor. Let me close this, and we'll export the solids again. Now the corridor is already selected. Let me choose Extract Corridor Solids. I'm going to extract them within a polygon. I'll select this square and I'll press Enter. I'm going to keep the default colorization and name and I'll choose Next. On the Property Data tab, let me open up Corridor Shape Information, and I'll drag this over. Right here is where it's extracting that classification code. Note that it will remember my attribution from the previous extraction. I'll choose Next. I'm going to add these to a new drawing. I'll click the Ellipsis button, and we'll call this Solids 2, and I'll save. Finally, I'll extract the solids. Now that I'm finished, we'll take a look at that drawing. I'll come up and choose Open. I'll select the drawing and we'll choose Open. Let's change the visual style to Conceptual. We'll orbit this up and I will zoom in. I will then select one of the Pave 1 solids. We'll go to the Properties palette and here on the Extended Data tab, if I drag this down, right here we can see the value I added for the classification code. I'm going to move out and I'll press Escape to deselect the solid. Let's look at one last thing. I'm going to jump over to Navisworks. Here in Navisworks, let's try and open that same drawing. I'll choose Solids 2, and I'll click Open. As soon as this comes up, I am going to use the Orbit option to tip this up. And then we'll zoom in on the end. I'll jump back to the Selection tool, and I'll select that Pave 1 shape, and then I'll come up and choose Properties. Here in the Properties panel, we'll find a collection of tabs that hold the attribute information for this object. Some of these tab names will match my property set definitions. Here's the one containing my user-defined attribution. Let's jump over. Here's the corridor shape information. And if I come over a little further, here's the corridor model information. As you can see, using Civil 3D 2017, we have much more control over the solids extracted from corridor models. These solids can easily be leveraged by other applications, and they're capable of carrying as much extended attribution as needed. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.